We are back for another episode of the Stuckian Augmented Reality Podcast. Again, I'm your host, Stephen Christian. Uh, eventually, I'll have another guest on the podcast. Uh, I, the goal for me is to um, get a whole bunch of different uh, black XR creators and to essentially continue that series that I started with uh, Damian uh, McDuffie uh, earlier in the year. Um, but, you know, like, I, I think it's it's been really interesting. I, I've been trying to do an episode every week, and one reason or another that doesn't get done, mainly because I'm super tired. Like, medical school has been a very interesting journey so far. Um, and the way I like to describe, like, medical school is, like, some people uh, will say that medical school is like drinking from a fire hose. And I could see that, like, I, I really feel that sometimes. But uh, from what I'm used to, where I'm coming from, you know, emerging tech and having to have to be up to date on, like, the latest things that happen, the biggest thing that I've noticed is that compared to medical school, or, like, compared to tech, like, pre-medical school, I felt like I was waking up at, like, 6 o'clock, you know, 6 a.m., and starting my day, or I would start my day at like 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., and I'll finish my day around 12 p.m. or 12 a.m., 11 p.m., 12 a.m. And what I would be doing is constantly reading different message boards, reading a lot, watching a lot of videos, studying this stuff, and then trying to figure out how to apply it immediately to current projects as things constantly are updating and changing. And I feel like since I got into the XR space, and I started doing AR stuff. Like, I kid you not, it felt like I was learning a new, I was learning something new every single day. And every week or every couple, every couple weeks or every month, it felt like there was a new update that had more stuff I needed to know. And so I was sort of used to that constant updating, constant updating thing. And so I, I always, I think I've like, essentially described it as like, you get a little bit of information that you have to try to apply, to apply across a broad spectrum of possibilities and that is different than medical school where every day is still different every day is still different but when you're trying to when you're learning things you're learning a whole bunch of different information and you only get to apply it minimally you know you only get to apply it once or twice and that's just during like a test and that's it you know, you only get one shot, whereas with XR, just the tech stuff, I'm tr I'm taking this information, taking the little bit of information, taking the information that I get, and the way you improve on it, the way you get better is you have to try to apply it to a bunch of different things, a bunch of different ideas, just trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. And so the studying part is really just the practice of it, the practice of using technology. Whereas the practice of medicine or the preparation for the practice of medicine is being able to just recall information that you only, you know, you only get to apply once or twice. And so I just thought it was really interesting how, you know, that that sharks that that shift in uh, in how my regular my normal day is and what people how people describe it and how I'm experiencing it. Um, because it's like I, you know, pre-medical school, I was studying and working more than 10 hours a day. And so now I just don't have to work to like, I, I don't have to work 10 hours to study. Like my studying is my work now. It's just shifted in that way. And so I'm just uh, taking the time that I've devoted and, and shifting it to a different thing. But for anybody that's interested in freaking trying to get into exploring medicine or is interested in medicine and interested in technology, like, honestly, it's just, you know, the day-to-day -day is it doesn't feel as different. It's just that the information that you're learning is different and how you're able to apply it is different. Um, and I don't know, it's just, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm, I wonder if that's going to change as I start to do more clinical work. Uh, but right now, it just feels like I'm always just at a computer, and I'm always just watching videos and reading stuff. Literally, this what I've been doing for the past you know year since the pandemic hit. Uh, 
And then, you know, I go to class and stuff, so it, it's, it's been good. But, you know, past block one, that was great. Past my cardio, uh, cardiology exam, cardiovascular exam. And it, it's, it's one of those things where, like, you start to learn more about yourself as you get further into this process. Not only what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy, uh, because those are sort of just, it feels like those are just phenomenons that hit. Uh, but the real big thing is like what you're interested in learning so that you could apply it to your life or to other people's lives. And, you know, when we're learning about, you know, cardiovascular stuff, it's like, you know, the number one killer of Americans is heart disease. And so looking at how, what leads to heart disease and all those things is just really fascinating. And then as I think back to, uh, like the AR, like the mixed reality human anatomy demo that I did, it, it further solidifies like, okay, you know, being able to make an immersive experience that is, uh, that allows people to explore themselves or explore the things that happen within them, uh, in a, in an immersive way, but also, you know, a way to sort of take a step back and just sort of admire just the magnificence of just the dynamics of the mechanisms. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's, I think there's a lot of stuff there. Like, I, I think there's a lot of, of avenues to explore with. The only problem is it takes a while to build the stuff out. When you have to build the 3D models, you have to do the back-end development, you have to uh, do all the animation, you have to do all the user experience and user uh, interface stuff. You have to do all that stuff. And it could take, you know, weeks, months, maybe even years to build out these experiences. But once they're done, and if you make it for a mobile device, uh, then they exist and, and they work as tools. <coughs> and, I, and I say this because uh, one of the things that I've noticed in medical school is that, and this has been like a reoccurring thing from like professors, from uh, medical students and all that is that the learning resources in medical school outside of just a book and a lecture are very, very minimal. Like they have, uh, there's like this YouTuber called Ninja Nerd. He does pretty much like a, a, like a spark notes lecture style video for different concepts. And so, you know, a lot of people love Ninja Nerd. A lot of people love, uh, boards and beyond a lot of people love osmosis a lot of people love sketchy and pixarize which are sort of making these whimsical stories to remember these concepts uh but it, it's it, it's people trying to integrate the arts without understanding or without being artists essentially uh you know, people, uh, physicians or healthcare professionals have these ideas and they explore these things, but they're not eye catching. And so for me coming into the space and seeing how, how lackluster the resources are, and then seeing the stuff that like I'm able to do and, and seeing the stuff that like, I know a lot of people are able to do. It's like, there's a, there's a positive, there's an avenue here. One to just improve the animation. Like when we're going through our cardiology stuff, like the animation was trash it's literally just like, you know, clip art moving. Like it is horrible. Uh, but like that stuff is like low hanging fruit, you know, like, and then adding AR and VR to it, uh, it it's just low hanging fruit. And I, and I, and I see that and I see that it's not changing anytime soon. And people are sort of cool with it because as long as they remember this stuff and, and there's something that helps them remember it, uh, it works and it's the greatest thing since sliced bread but you know it, it's it's just crazy to just sort of just see what's popping and 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 just be like dang that's it like that's what you guys are you know hooting and hollering about like this is this is the best thing this is this it's cool i mean it works it's cool but like this ain't no million dollar idea right here like this is you know, this is, you know, Adobe Flash 8 from 1996. <laughs> like, it, it's, like, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. And so, uh, you know, but medical school is, medical school is going, and I have a lot of ideas. I'm constantly having a lot of ideas about 
what I could do to uh, explore the intersections. And you know, not only in education, but in sort of like how to make uh, health education more entertaining and more engaging. Because it's not, it's one thing to just sort of give people a pamphlet. It's another thing to give somebody an experience that lives with them. And I always think back to like the power of music and the power of movies and cinema and how the, the experience, the story is shown through an experience. And the experience is the thing that's memorable. You could read the story, you could listen to the story, you could watch the story, you could play the story. But the experience that you get with experiencing the story through a certain medium is what people latch on to. It's why people love their favorite songs and they remember everything about that moment they had, they listened to their favorite song. And it's like, why can't we have that in health education? Because health education is essentially learning about ourselves and what works and what doesn't work with ourselves. And so why can't we create experiences much like, you know, my favorite movie, Osmosis Jones, or uh, this anime called um, you know, cells at work, you know, those two are just sort of cream, cream de la creme for me in terms of like what I like to reference. Uh, but you know, we'll see how it goes, right? Like it's really just sort of exploring those things. And so as like medical school is going, right? Like I just finished my exam. And so now the next thing coming up, uh, because we're back in convention season now, right? Is a augmented world expo. And, uh, for those that don't know, I will be speaking at the Augmented World Expo. Um, and so I'll be in Santa Clara. I had to get, I had to like request time off because uh, I was missing some required things for school. But they're, uh, but the school's been super uh, supportive about about this stuff. And so they're super excited. And, uh, and I was worried that they, if I didn't pass my test, that like they'd be like, oh, you you need to, you, you're not focused enough and you need to, you know, we're not going to let you go because you're, this is a distraction. Uh, but that was not the case. And I was reminded of that. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, yeah, they're super excited to, and I think that just like things like this that come down the pipeline uh, are, are going to be supportive. They're just going to be beneficial in my journey uh, to become a physician. Uh, maybe it will lead to me being able to do a PhD in some intersection. Uh, I feel like that would be great. That would be cool. Getting a PhD in uh, XR or emerging tech or whatever the heck the PhD program will be. Uh, but they're super supportive of it. And so I, I, I feel really fortunate to uh, have the opportunities that I have. Uh, but Augmented World Expo, that is a, it is essentially uh, the biggest emerging tech AR VR uh, convention of the world uh, it happens once a year uh, global following and uh, because it's going to be virtual and like it's going to be like virtual and uh, and in person I, I, I will get to have like the best of both worlds uh, and I say that like compared to like when I did the Wall Street Journal future of everything festival where everything was virtual and so like there wasn't like that footprint you know, it felt like kind of a blip. It was part of like this grand scheme, right? Like that I was like part of with like Paris Hilton and Gabrielle Union and all these different people. But like it, it, like I didn't have any pictures of being there and, and that kind of sucked. And so here I'm like super excited about that. Uh, and we'll be talking on, um, you know, we'll be talking with Unity. So it's me, Lady Phoenix and Damian McDuffie uh and you know lady phoenix did the brianna taylor uh xr experience uh damian mcduffie uh did the uh black panthers uh he's a black panther archivist and he did the black panther ar experiences and i did the george floyd ar experiences and so you know we sort of over the year we we were able to accomplish and create things using uh unity software to uh, explore these ideas that otherwise would not be explored if, if black creators didn't pursue them and understand the technology to do it. And so looking at what that impact was from each one of us doing these different things and then 
essentially coming together uh, and being able to talk with the, the unity, the vice president of unity uh, on stage about like just what we did. Like it, it's, I kid you not, I remember looking at my girlfriend and being like, hey, you know, this is this project. I, I know that like, you know, there's something here. I know I can do something and have an impact and, uh, and address very specific things that like affect and impact black people expressing themselves during, you know, a horrendous moment, right? You know, normally you just, what are you going to do, make a song? You know, what are you going to do? Like, maybe you can make a movie, make a documentary, you know, you make posters, you make t-shirts, all these things, but like, it's really difficult. Like, the, the bar is so high to, to do all these things. Whereas if you have a computer, you can create this, you can create with technology and uh, and have that be an example of innovating technology and you don't need to lose your blackness in it and often you have to especially in Silicon Valley and stuff and so I you know I, I'm, I'm super excited about this mainly because I get to go to a convention uh, that I haven't you know I get to go to a convention and and explore these different things and, and talk about them uh, and really solidify the essentially solidify the experience that like I, I was able to have that I that I was able to create and it, it it was interesting like it I I really you know I I guess next next episode I'll, I'll be able to talk about like how awesome it was um, I guess the only thing that sucks is that I could only get the first day off and so I'll be there for Tuesday but uh, it's going to be uh, two other days as well and so pretty much Big things I'm super excited about is get being able to talk on the Unity stage at Augmented World Expo about you know the things I'm passionate about, which is like you know how to how technology can be used to positively impact Black communities, um, and really get sort of the credit to do that and be seen as an expert in that area uh, when I really just sort of you know like stumbled into it. It wasn't something that I. Uh, planned on being a part of and so it, it's i mean it's pretty solid um and then i get to meet like all the freaking people that like i follow in this in the xr space uh that like i only really interact with on twitter like i've just a whole bunch of people that like i've i've met off of twitter over the past year and a half uh it's only been no it hasn't even been a year and a half like it's only been like a year and some change a year and two months year and three months uh, but I get to like meet all these people and it's, it's just going to be cool. Like I, I feel like this is the being able to like build these connections with people much like when I used to do like comic conventions and I like met a lot of black creators and connect with a lot of black creators and we still keep in contact. Uh, I, I finally get to do that and like get pictures and like sort of see this community that uh, I've like built virtually. It's like this sort of like tropes or not the tropes, but like the sort of quintessential uh, experiences that people have when they like go hard in like these message boards and like built these friends that they've never even met or heard of before, like they've never seen in person. And then when they finally meet, it's like, oh my gosh, you're real. This is great. And so, uh, and so I'm super excited about that. Um, but one thing that did happen, uh, and I, you know, mind you, like I am, like going to be speaking at the Augmented World Expo, one of the biggest things there. And so it comes with a level of, I don't want to say prestige, but like esteem. It, it comes with the level of like notoriety because not many people do it and not a lot of black people do it, right? So it's just sort of, you stand out and then you stand out even more. And then put that on, put on top of that, you know, there's no, probably not going to be any medical students there. And so that's going to, it's definitely going to stand out there, right? Like black medical students that, like it is just time it does it right so uh so people what i've found is that people have been reaching out to me because they see my name on the list and they see i own a company and they probably have seen the work that i've done or they're just like oh snap we need to like meet this person right so i had a bunch of people reach out to me that they want to meet me and set a schedule meetings and stuff like that and i'm like well you know i'm only going to be there for a day so you know we could you know meet up and stuff but i really want to just like 
see cool stuff and like meet the meet the people that like I follow that follow me that got a bunch of different followers so I could like get a photo op and like bump my follower you know follower count up and stuff right you know just usual cloud stuff but so like one like one company reached out to me and they were like oh you know like we're we are this startup and we have this proprietary technology for like mobile devices and AR and VR. And I'm like, boom, that's right up my alley, right? Uh, and then they're like, you know, we have this MVP that we've been working on and we're looking for people to partner with uh, to help improve and see how it could improve their workflow. And, uh, and they're like, you know, we came across your stuff uh, on the AWE uh, attendees list and we wanna see if we wanna cooperate or, you know, schedule a meeting. So I was like, bet, you know, like, we could schedule a meeting, super interested. Uh, if it's something that can help me improve my workflow that I have and help me right some of the wrongs that I've done in my, like some of my rec my current projects that in, and it'll save me time that I could like afford to do with other stuff. Like that'll be great. Right. And so, you know, the day before, like a couple of days before, uh, we get like, we were supposed to have the meeting scheduled. They didn't send me the link. And then they send me a, a, a email saying, um, you know, oh, I'm terribly sorry about the mix up. Uh, you know, we mistaken you for a unity based AR content creating company. Uh, and that's why we reached out to you. And at the moment, just like looking at your business model, like it doesn't look like we have anything to offer for you. And uh, therefore, like the meeting isn't necessary anymore. And we're just sorry about that. But we hope you have a great day. And I was like, wait a minute, what? What are you talking about? Like, you thought that I was a unity based AR content creating company. And you see that based off of your research, you're wrong or whatever. I was just, I was just thrown back. Right. So, uh, so I ended up responding back and saying, you know, like one, just like, where'd you get your information from? Uh, and two, yes, I own a company and that company builds immersive experiences, primarily using Unity for AR animation and a lot of educational stuff. And I'm like me personally, I'm also a, a Unity certified 3D artist and I'm a Unity certified instructor. And, you know, to add icing to the cake, right? Like, you know, the studio, Illtopia, that I own, the main project that like I'm working on with them that I released with Iltopia uh, is the Island Fever AR experience, which is was featured in the Unity Changemaker Showcase. And so, you know, and on, on top of that, like, you know, it's part of this whole like Unity Creator Core thing that they're that they're releasing uh, essentially this month. And so, you know, I was thrown back by by them saying that like I wasn't a Unity based AR content creating company because the reason people know about me is because I create AR content in Unity. That's literally it. And that's not, you like, I don't know how that, that could be lost on you. And so they ended up, they like, they responded back and they're like, you know, we're super sorry. And, you know, we, uh, our research showed that like, you are an artist that creates comics and cartoons. And it's like, yes, I do. I make that very clear that I do that. And, um, but what are those comics and cartoons? What software do I use to make that stuff? Unity, right? And then they, you know, they saw the, the, the Illtopia Studios website and it really was just about comics and cartoons and sort of the Island Fever story. But I guess what's lost on people is that all those things that you see are AR based stuff that's made in Unity. And so it, it's, uh, you know, I, I sort of was talking to my mentor about that and I was like, dude, you know, like I feel some type of way because like this, I was like, this is why black people get passed up on opportunities because they easily get written off for something that for, you know, things that happen in face value. And I just felt some type of way about that. And he was like, you know, like, what do you mean about that? Cause, uh, yeah, he was like, what do you mean about that? Because, um, like, he's not black, and so, like, it, it's, he just, like, he got it, but, like, he was, like, clarified a little bit so that, like, I, I'm understanding you. 
And I was just like, yeah, you know. Oh, and then he also said, you know, if you go to like the, the Utopia website and everything and they just go based off of that, they wouldn't think AR innovations or VR innovations or Unity. There's no reference to that at all. And it's like, yes, because I I wanted to make a clear distinction between what Iltopia does and what like I do in terms of like my personal business for, you know, like legal reasons and tax reasons and stuff like that. Uh, but, and I, and I think I've, this is an example of like me succeeding in that. But the thing that got me was that with, uh, with this experience, the reason they reached out to me was because of, I was, I'm a, I was a part of AWE and not because of Iltopia, not because of them going to see Iltopia's website and stuff. They saw that I was a speaker and I'm speaking with unity and, uh, and I'm speaking about, uh, essentially like technology embrace and how technology can be used to, uh, improve, uh, stuff for black people. And, uh, you know, however you define what stuff is, right? Like just improve stuff for black people. And, and so for them to say that, oh, we thought that you were a unity AR based company and overlook what I'm actually doing uh, with Unity and and probably just seeing that like my talk is about racial issues and stuff. Probably just instantly wrote and written off as like, oh, this is some diversity and equity inclusion talk and they don't really know the technology. They're just they're just talking about, you know, some hypothetical stuff, right? Like and and did just be written off like that and not acknowledging all the things that like you could easily Google about uh, that I've done with Unity and in AR and in content creation. Uh, it it rubbed me the wrong way because it's like I can't get any the the you know the next thing that I could possibly get to to solidify myself in the AR space is selling a company for a million dollars or becoming a, a Unity master trainer in AR. It's like. What what other stuff do I need to to prove or to do or show for uh, to to not have this experience, right? It's like because my demo reels, all that stuff looks like everything is there, and it's there, like it's literally there. And so I, I you know, when I when I when I experienced this, I was like, this is why, this is how black people get passed up on opportunities because you know the there's a disconnect and, and, you know, there's a, there's this unintentional, like whether it was intentional or not, like they didn't see the value in the stuff that I was creating. And it's hard to think that it, there wasn't a racial component associated with it. That's the thing that, that gets me. It's that I was told that I was not a unity based AR company based off of what they saw that I was doing and not acknowledging that under the hood, all of that stuff was based in unity and all of that stuff are examples of the potential of AR experiences. And it's also an example of the potential of black creativity using technology and being written off like that and told in a response verbatim that I wasn't a representation of what they thought their product can help. It, I felt, I felt some type of way about that. And then having to defend myself, having to de literally just list my record and defend myself in order to get an opportunity or in order to give some level of confidence to the stuff that I've done. It, I felt like that was, I don't think, I don't think other non-black creators with the resume that I have have to do that. And it, I think this, that's going to stick with me for a while. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, ended up having the, ended up having the uh, meeting with them. It was a quick meeting. I talked to them about like the things that I'm doing. You know, like it's you just sort of have a short memory 
at some point and you just got to move on you just got to you know make connections and and see you know what happens but ended up having a meeting ended up talking to them uh they ended up talking to me about like what they had to offer and you know we'll see we'll see how it goes um you know if it's something that's going to be useful for me cool if it's not something that will be useful for me you know i mean cool too i i will i will definitely uh I will definitely be very critical of what they have to offer me because, you know, me being at the position that I'm at, it's like if it doesn't pass what if it doesn't pass the test for me or if it's not useful, you know, like me black me making a review of how unuseful this is, uh, has a has a little bit of weight to it. And I and I think that that's something that like you know, that's a, that's something that like I think I that's a duty or a responsibility that I have. And because it like that, that, that was just some nonsense. And I don't, you know, I, I don't think it's an isolated incident. I wouldn't say like it's intentionally something that like they do, but like, I think across the board in general for black creators that are doing things that are of, of merit or worth and then being, you know, written off as, you know, not established or, not credible it, i don't think that's an isolated incident i don't think my experience is an isolated experience and so um you know we'll see we'll see how that goes we will see how that goes but um you know the other stuff that you know has sort of been happening since we last spoke right um obviously facebook and their whole metaverse thing i which i I think it's really interesting. I think it's a, uh, if we're talking about what is the mass adoption of emerging technology, what goes from being a fringe to a, uh, essentially like a, a household name or understanding is, uh, you know, I would say Facebook is going to be one of those people that does it. Um, you know, social media, where would social media be if Facebook wasn't there or if Instagram wasn't there or if Twitter wasn't there, right? There's always going to be these adopters that, aren't necessarily innovating in the ways that we expect innovations to be, but they're, they're making it, uh, they're making it more accessible. And so much how, you know, Facebook is all about making things accessible at the expense of your privacy and sort of your agency and, you know, controlling things. Uh, you know, I think, I think that's just a byproduct of just like first world problems, right? If you, you get to do a lot of stuff, but like you kind of have to pay with stuff that goes beyond money you have the opportunity to do that but like you just kind of have to or you could just pay to build out your own you know pay hundreds of millions of dollars to build out your own thing and then you can do whatever you want with it a lot of us don't have that right and so uh you know i think facebook will make things more accessible i always instantly think about like you know second life and you know uh decentraland and and all these mmo rpgs and all these different things that like already exist but they're all disconnected i think the beauty is that facebook has a possibility has the has the resources and the and the agency to connect these things to where you have your second life character and you could connect that with your xbox live gamer account or your playstation live gamer account you could buy a whole bunch of nfts those NFTs can be on your characters and you could integrate those things very seamlessly. And then those could be connected to your social media accounts to where you don't have to know this workflow to, to post the things that you do in the metaverse. You can just instantly share that stuff and everything is connected. I see that that's the possibility. Um, and it's exciting because right now, especially with like blockchain stuff, there's, I've been for the longest time for years, because I got into the NFT space um, back in like 2015, 2016, I started like selling NFTs and stuff. And back then, like you would sell it as Ethereum and then you would cash out as PayPal. And so now, I mean, you have whole wallets and stuff like that. It's progressed far beyond like where I was at, um, where it was at when I started. But the thing that the thing is that like you have to be within that ecosystem of the NFT specifically, right? Like you have NFTs that are in uh, off of Solana, off of Ethereum, 
off of Tezos, off of, you know, eventually Cardano, all these different, you know, projects have NFT platforms, but they're all disconnected, right? So if I, like I do NFTs still, and so I have NFTs on Hive and I have NFTs on Solana and, and Tezos, and I have to mint those individually, they're not connected. And so I feel like the metaverse has a has the potential to connect all these different blockchains or at least have some sort of transferable thing, uh, some currency, common currency that that allows for it. The only problem is that it it no longer becomes decentralized because Facebook owns it. Right. And so uh, and so that that's that's the fear. But we'll see how it goes. Right. It, it's uh, just me. I appreciate that. You know, I don't have to go to these different message boards to figure out how to participate in these things. And when it, uh, and that's been one of the things that at least a lot of the black people I've been around, a lot of those people have been uh, focused around, you know, they don't get into it mainly because they don't. It's too complicated, like it and it doesn't nothing connects. And so, uh, you know, it just nothing connects and it's too complicated. And so they would like to get into it, but it's, it's just inaccessible at the moment. And so um, and so Facebook is just doing that stuff and we'll just see how it goes. Like it, it's if Facebook backs it, then it's going to be worth a billion dollars or whatever. And, and, and a lot of people will be able to use it. And so uh, and so that that's half the battle right there. You either don't have a lot of people using it and it's sort of unhindered by corporate interests or corporate interests get involved and then there's an ecosystem and and there's a there's an extension of a community that you can build on it and you just sort of take take it for what it is um you know if it generates interest in it and it helps people along the way or it creates more access points then you know like you just have to be you just have to be careful with it and uh, uh but on the flip side right like facebook is doing this to make things more connected and understanding Whereas Apple is coming out the cuts with this freaking, this freaking XR headset that's supposed to be, you know, the next best thing since sliced bread. And this mess is supposed to be costing like $3,000. And it's like, like what? Like how, like how, how, why, why? Like, I understand, you know, Apple's going to be, you know, Apple's the leader, the trendiest you know, sort of company, anything that Apple comes out with sort of sets the sets the, the precedent, right? But when it comes to like AR and VR stuff, VR, yes, you know, the Oculus Quest, Facebook has that, they're doing great, doing all that stuff, I understand that, but that mess is only two, like $250, right? And it works for what it is, there's a lot of applications for it, people love it. But when we're talking about AR, AR is all about AR, the reason AR will become mass adopted is not because another $3,000 headset is going to come out. It's because people are going to find ways to augment their everyday life. And those augmentations are going to be memorable experiences that improve their mundane lives. What mundane, however you want to describe it, right? And so perfect example is the reason AR is so popular now mainly is because of Snapchat face filters. And all the stuff you could do with your phone and and you could share it with people and they become conversation starters right you know AR is not 8k displays AR is not necessarily eye tracking and all this stuff it does you know it's predicated on cameras and all that but like it, it's AR is you know a medium that allows you to take current technology and and integrate it into your life so seamlessly that it that it is real you know you send a video and that video shows augmentations a part of real life that is what ar is that's the power of ar this that like apple's trying to do where they're trying to put an m1 chip into an ar headset and have 8k displays and, you know eye tracking and these top-notch cameras and all these different things and it's still not video pass through like it, it's like it's, I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes. You know, is this going to be a, a Apple Maps situation when that first came out? And people were like, oh yeah, Apple Maps is cool. Then they tried it and they're like, I want Google Maps again, you know? Or is this actually going to have uh, an impact on 
you know, the average daily user that is interested in AR. And I'm not talking about like enterprise solutions because there's always enterprise solutions. There's tons of those. But who's gonna like, at the end of somebody's day, who's gonna be, you know, gonna be chilling with their $3,000 AR headset from Apple? Like, yeah, there's people that are gonna buy those things, but they're gonna buy those. They're, they're the people that buy every MacBook that comes out every single year, regardless of how much it costs. You know, but that's not that's not what people are doing, right? You know, what is the what is the person that has the the freaking iPhone like the iPhone eight going to do? You know, they can't they can't do this. They can't use this. It's like this is this is nonsense, right? And so I'm I'm going to be curious to see where that goes, um, and and mainly because it's like things are changing, like the the way the way AR is being approached and used and the, the interest for AR is changing. And I'm getting a glimpse of that right now where uh, I, I was just asked to speak at the Unity Certified Instructor uh, Summit that's the week after uh, Augmented World Expo, right? So like I get to speak at Augmented World Expo with Unity and then I get to speak at their like uh, Unity Certified Instructor Summit. And so it's like, this is like pretty cool, right? Um, like things just keep happening but the thing about it is that they asked me to speak because they see all like the youtube videos and the and the courses and all these things that i make and um and they're like okay there's things that like you're doing that we want like more instructors to do and we want you to essentially just like do a presentation about like your process and and what are the things that like how do you how do you approach teaching how do you approach uh teaching with unity and how do you approach uh, integrating XR or AR into it uh, in the way that you do because it feels fun it makes it like people want to join and do the stuff uh, just to make cool stuff not to like get a job I mean as you learn the skills you can get a job but it's all about that just like wholesome exploration and uh, and I was just like you know in terms of education uh, in XR and just like where things can go that's the opposite of like what Apple's trying to do, where I'm trying to make things more accessible and Unity's trying to make things more accessible. Could you not like more people know about Unity or know how to use Unity because of the Unity Learn platform and YouTube videos and maybe Skillshare? I'm not sure about that, but like YouTube videos where Unity is free, you download it. Unity Learn is free. You just log on to it and YouTube, everybody has YouTube. That mess is free. And people that are creating stuff they're creating because they enjoy it and they want people to to learn things that like they just learned they're like dang why doesn't anybody know this you know why am i the only person that knows this this should not be something that is an enterprise solution right there's you shouldn't have this like huge paywall in front of it to have this experience or to be able to do this it's all just a, a community uh it's a community of gen community generated ideas and community sharing ideas uh, and then building off of those ideas to improve them, right? You know, it's it's all about just helping each other out, uh, you know, as we all advance in this technological age. And I I, I feel fortunate that, like, you know, the things that I'm doing are, are helping in that. And, uh, and it's uh, inspiring people. But I, I feel like I, I will have to continue combating these... Uh, combating sort of entities that can can muddy those things right if somebody sees a that you need three thousand dollars to have an ar headset to enjoy ar experiences then if i'm trying to teach oh yeah why don't you learn ar why don't you learn these things they're instantly going to think like well why would i do that if in order for me to play around with it i have to get a three thousand dollar headset then it's it's going to be an instant turnoff that i have to defend and you know i'd you know, at some point, like, I, I just don't want to do that uh, because I'd rather continue to try to inspire people opposed to trying to talk somebody off of uh, or demystifying or correcting something that, like, should not even be, like, a thought. You know, you already have a phone. Why are we talking about, you know, why you need a $3,000 headset? No, you have a phone and that mess has all the same capabilities as, as everything else. And so it's, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I feel like I'm fortunate enough to be reflective in this sort of moment in the space that I'm at now uh, as a AR developer, as a creator, 
uh, definitely light years ahead of where I was, you know, two years ago when I uh, when I first started. Uh, dang, I am going on my two year anniversary of being in the space or opening up Unity. Uh, but I just feel like I, I made a lot of progress. And I think it's because of just the other stuff that I've been prior to that, you know, like my 10 years of animation experience, uh, you know, my 10 years of being an entrepreneur, my 10 years of, you know, well, I guess I was a, a Windows mobile developer, um, you know, coming out of high school and, and college and stuff. So like, that was like, you know, it was like, yeah, it was still like 10, 15 years ago. So, so yeah, I guess it, you know, I guess that's just the natural progression. Uh, you get wisdom with age, right? And so, uh, you know, 21 year old Steve, uh, definitely is not as wise as a 31 year old Steve. Um, also, you know, probably not as, uh, not as heavy and as out of shape though. And so I definitely need to, uh, you know, take a, a play from, you know, 21 year old Steve's playbook again. Uh, but with it, like, I feel like this journey that I've had has, has really given me an opportunity to, uh, really evolve as a creator, a content creator. And so the things that I like, I feel like I, I've gotten to a point where I, I don't need to just constantly create work and create work and put it out there to establish who I am. I feel like over the past year, over the past year, 2021, uh, was me sort of defining, like solidifying what, like who I am as a content creator. 2020 and everything before that was me trying to figure out or parse down, trim the fat of all the things that I'm interested in and, and narrow it down into something that uh, I can focus on. 2021, Steve now, is sort of like, I am a content creator. I create comics and cartoons using emerging technology to imp inspire educate and entertain you know people i want to make black people enjoy their experiences you know it, it's that, that's what i do right and so now that i like know what i want to do and i know sort of like i have a vision that i can build off of and because of medical school i don't have to worry about working and i don't have to oh well, i also don't have a lot of time to like waste on things uh it's all about like what i can create that has the biggest impact and so, you know, I'm, I, I don't see myself compromising on creating work that's inspiring, rel culturally relevant and educational. And so then it's like, how do you make that stuff entertaining? Uh, how do I make something that follows my journey of creating these projects uh, as a medical student and then uh, and then create reference points for people co to learn that stuff, too, and, and build a community around that? Uh, and it, it's been a journey, but I, I'm, I'm trying to it's getting it, figuring it out, right? So, like, obviously, doing the podcast stuff, obviously, just, like, posting stuff on, you know, social media like YouTube and Instagram and stuff. Uh, I'm still teaching at Portland Community College, so I still have my augmented reality uh, comics course that's sort of like a hybrid, um, like, hybrid synchronous, asynchronous, you know, because it's COVID. And... Um, and uh, I need to like sort of shift gears with like what I want to do at Patreon and like Gumroad. But it's essentially the vision is that I want to create these like five to 10 minute videos that, uh, and I follow this this guy, this kid uh, on YouTube called Gox Art and, uh, and like really good. Like he's, he, he knows his stuff, he's, he's cool. Um, I follow all this stuff, but like what he does is he, the I'm invested in his journey of creating. And then at the end, I get to enjoy his creation. And so for me, like a lot of the stuff that I do, it's about the journey of creating something using these tools. And the journey is how you learn, how you develop, how you get better. And then at the end, you get to show off that journey in a, in an experience that you built. And so you know, I could do, I do that with pictures. I do that with images with like time-lapse stuff, but like, I want to make it empowering where the journey is the character. The journey is what people are invested in. The journey is the cinema, the, the entertainment. And then from there you get to 
see sort of the, the grand finale, uh, the climax, the conclusion of, of what that journey was. And then if you want to learn more, you can follow the journey through a course. You could have all these different tech tips uh, that, that are, are referenced in it, and you could go from there. And I think that's the that's what I will continue to build is just sort of that that formula, uh, working on a project and taking people on this creative journey, and uh, for five to ten minutes, and then if they want to learn more, they want to do a deep dive, then you have you'll have a course that is a walkthrough of that of that project that uh, you can explore, and uh, and then you know then you could share your own stuff and and stuff. It, it's uh, I think that. And, and more importantly, like this is all about like being accessible and doing the things that like you would otherwise need to do, only be able to do at like a, you know, an internship or, or do at school. You know, you can't really get a degree in XR. And at least from my understanding, they're not hiring a lot of black people. <laughs> you know, it's like you, you just can't like you can't get internships and stuff like that right now. It's just not that's just not a thing. Um, and so it, it's it's something that I was like, you know, for me that has this opportunity and is fortunate to be in this position, I will, uh, I can at least do my part. And mainly, I mean, the other part is like, I do have a, I am a Unity certified instructor, so I like need to do stuff to keep my certification. And so, uh, and so why not make some cool stuff to, uh, to teach people how to make more cool stuff like that? That's just that why not like that that's what all this is for you know and so again like I'll, I'll be just like building on this whole thing with podcasting and teaching and, and trying to find like what is that like you know what is that formula for me that like i could do as a creator to balance out the stresses of medical school and and then also have this positive impact not only in my community but across a variety of communities whether it's game development or unity uh, users or just people that want to just interested in, in, in exploring something and so on. And then maybe, you know, this may be like the foundation of like a PhD that I could work on to integrate into the field of medicine. Because I mean, once I get that MD, man, you know, I can make video games and have those be accredited and all that. Like people will be able to take me seriously in that, in, in the medical field space, uh, because of the, you know because of the things i was able to do in healthcare and so that that's uh we'll see it we'll 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 put a we'll put a pin in that and uh and we'll see how that goes this is all speculation but you know that you got to start somewhere right and so i think a year from now i'll be curious to see like what i was able to do uh much like a year a year ago i uh i look back at you know what I was able to do and the things that I specifically set out to do and uh, and I feel like I got pretty far and so again like the new thing that I'm doing with this podcast is like getting prompts and uh, trying to essentially just talk about it for a little bit and uh, and so the prompt for this episode is um, you know our generation and the pressure uh, looking at your generation and the pressure to have original thoughts and ideas or getting stuck in the cycle of looking back at the past and adding a modern twist to old concepts. Uh, in 2021, it feels challenging to create something refreshing and new while having the time to execute your idea before someone else does it first. You know, and some examples are sort of fast fashion and recycled trends from the 80s 90s and early 2000s and then music sampling old beats instead of creating fresh new sounds and it, i think with this it's it's really interesting how you know we live in a we live in a culture we live in a society where no idea is original now you know no idea is new you know when when disney says okay we want to make a new movie instead of making a new movie they look back in their past catalog of Cinderella, you know, Under and One Dalmatians, uh, Sleeping Beauty, and they said, "Oh, what if we made a modern rendition of it, a a spiritual retelling? Uh, instead of it being 2D cartoons, it's this 3D live action sort of mix, right? And uh, and 
like they'll 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 tweak it and they'll they'll make it they'll make it new for a new generation but like it's it's just a remix of it right um i will say you know like the little mermaid is going to be probably the next one but they're making little mermaid black so in my mind i we could we could use that right like if you add more black people to it i'm totally fine with that um i think uh, on the on the flip side right like we have uh we have lightyear like the buzz lightyear movie that's coming out and that's essentially the reference, like the reference point is Toy Story, but you're using that character and taking them on a new journey. And so I think there's there's liberty for that with original properties that uh, that you could do. The perfect example was uh, with Creed, you know, what Ryan Coogler was able to do with Creed. That was, that that's fresh and new. And it, it's not a remix, it's just a, it's an extension, you know, using the source material as, as, as that. But there's been many of like, black creators that have that have come to me and they're like oh i have these ideas but i don't know how to apply those to the technology to ar to whatever it's like what do you, how do you how do you translate an idea into some sort of creation and not have and have it be original and not be just like a remix of something uh, and i think that's just a growing trend of people wanting to do that but because there's so it's so easy to just put something out there that any new idea often becomes you know a a reference to something old or something that was just come out because there's so many people that come up with so many different ideas and we all live in the same society you know so like we all have the same reference points at some point you know everybody's seen at some point like every millennial has seen barney every person knows who big bird is Everybody knows who Mark Zuckerberg is. And so when those are your reference points and and uh, obviously it'll, it'll vary from like culture to culture, right? Like you'll have um, overlap and then you'll have things that aren't overlapping. But it, it's it's often like not necessarily like what the what the end result of the idea is. It's really just about people exploring their ideas and doing it that isn't to the detriment of other people um because for me there's a lot of the innovations that i've done are not new like for the life of me i did not think that like what i was doing was any different than anybody else i was just adding a little bit of culture to it that's it i take basic motion capture dances and motion capture work and animation I use a free tool that millions of people use. I use technology that's been around since 2012 or 2013, just image tracking. And I take comics and I just say, what does it look like to uh, have dances and movements and actions that you would see in comics, make that in 2D and 3D animation and not remove that from the comic book page just what if this happened what would it look like right and i and i think it's i think it really goes back to like what do you as a creator want to create and how can you set yourself apart with your creations how can you take something that seems you know mundane and normal and how can you just like make it just that much awesome that much more awesome and i think that's the that often to me feels like that's a conversation that I have. Not if it's original, not if it's, you know, some sort of, you know, modern twist or whatever. It's just, you know, I'm interested in this. What if I did this? What would happen? You know, I have this series called Pokemon Torque Team. You know, I didn't create the characters. What I did is I re reimagined the characters. What if, you know, instead of Pokemon trainers fighting each other, and perpetuating animal cruelty what if they what if the battles weren't animal you know dog fights and stuff what if they were dance battles you know what would that look like what would they what would they specialize in like what what would their moves be you know what would your pokemon's moves be if instead of fighting they danced you know that like and and that's as much as i need to to create something and you know, because for the most part, I'm not trying to create to to make money off of it. 
I'm trying to create to add something to the world that brings people joy and inspires people and, and allows people to make connections, to give them the liberty to be themselves and, uh, and be authentic. And so it, it's a, uh, those are things that I, I truly think are, are really the things that people, uh, people should focus on. You know, if you're, if you're worried about, you know, instead of worrying about like, oh man, I need to like make this new original thing. I need to learn how to, you know, make this, you know, come up with this, uh, you know, color palette or design or, or sound. Uh, it needs to be like completely original. It, like it has to be for me it's like you know i me as an educator and somebody that uh operates in you know the creative space and does original work and and does commission work and, and does all these different things i i want people to know how to use the tools i want people to know how to use the use things to pursue the ideas and not have their skills be a hindrance to their ideas you know i'd rather i'd rather people remix everything possible because that's really how you get better is taking things that exist and, and remixing them uh and and re giving a modern twist on them taking taking those ideas and and getting to the point where you're a master of the tools in your craft and the limiting factor is your ideas if you don't have any original idea at least you make some cool stuff i know many of people that have all these original ideas that are great and they're amazing and they need to find somebody to do it for them because they don't know how to do it and that is the worst thing for me because i see it so often and ultimately the people that i see it from i see so much potential in them and then because they didn't have access to the skills that were required they ended up getting into trouble or they ended up getting into something uh because they didn't they they their skills, their abilities, uh, could not go as far as their mind wanted them to go. And like, it sucks. Like it really, really sucks. And so for me, it's, you know, there's, there's many of people, you know, out right now making millions of dollars that have never had a fresh idea in their life. The freshest idea that they had is how to get over on people by not having fresh ideas. That's the freshest idea that they had. And so, you know, it, it's a, we'll see how it goes. Like it, it's, I'm, I'm really curious to see what the creator community is, is going to do. I know that it, it does feel like we're in like a time capsule and that, you know, it's going to, somebody's going to hit the reset button in like a couple of years and everything that like we thought was over in the two, in the early two thousands is going to have a, have a fresh comeback. You know, we're going to see, uh, we're going to see triple, you know, uh, 5x tall t's coming back we're gonna see freaking uh babes coming back I, I would love to see some babes coming back but we're gonna see babe we're gonna see all these different things coming back and uh and then i would just be like man this is this is some nonsense but uh and it's gonna be cheap it's gonna be more expensive than than it ever was uh on a side note on a side note right i uh i'm a big zoids fan and once I realized I had enough money to buy all the Zoids that I wanted, I um, I looked up how much Zoids were, and the model kits that used to be like 20 bucks at like Walmart are like $80 on eBay. And I was like, what the heck? That is the worst thing possible because now I can't afford that mess anymore uh, because it's too expensive. Uh, but I ended up going to this um, going to this random toy store and seeing some like Zoid model kits for like 20 bucks. But it was not the same Zoids that I, I remember seeing or that I grew up on. You know, Zoids, you, it's pretty much Gundam with animal robots. And, uh, and these were like animal robot trainers that like didn't pilot the Zoids. They just sort of raised them. And it was this weird sort of pseudo Pokemon Digimon type of thing. And I didn't, I didn't appreciate it. And so, uh, and so, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I really appreciate everybody just sticking around and, and following the journey and stuff like that. And uh, and it, it's, a, it's a journey, nevertheless. I, I'm super excited about just where it's going to go. So I'll keep you guys, some of y'all might see me at Augmented World Expo or watch my talk or, you know, watch a couple of the videos that I'll be posting pretty soon. And, um, and you know, without further ado, just 
follow me on the social nets and uh and i'll try to keep everybody updated on on all the interesting things that will be happening um oh so officially the there will be a kickstarter uh starting at the end of november and that kickstarter will be for the island fever augmented reality experiences and so i have a couple of people locked in to like add to the experiences uh it's going to be a hardcover book of 40 minutes worth of 40 plus minutes worth of content and that content will be the freshest thing you'll ever see out dances interactivity fight sequences music culture like innovation at the palm of your hands using emerging technology and available you could take it with you like anywhere that you go it's in your pocket like it i'm super excited about it and uh and i hope to you know just dive deeper into you know just like what i wanted to put out like my my premiere project um just look forward to sharing it with you guys so uh so if you're in portland uh you know there will be an exhibit that will be happening in portland at the end of the year beginning of the year uh after the kickstarter and it'll it'll be it'll be you know uh one for the books i'm, I'm pretty excited about it I've been working really hard on it and uh and excited for you guys to to uh play around with it so uh, without further ado again hit me up the stucky the stucky and augmented reality podcast uh you know hit up stuck on an island.com check out all the courses on gum road uh you know, Patreon, Iltopia Studios, at Stuckle and Island. Um, you know, I'll catch you guys later. Deuces.